ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂಜೇವನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಯಂಧೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಯೇಶು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತೆ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನಷ್ಟಕೆ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮರಂದಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಾಕ್ಷರೋನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭಿಸ್ತ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಯ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗರ ಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥ ಮೃತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಸವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಹ ಘನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಖ ಮೃತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶಾಶನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಿಣಿ ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪ ತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಬಹೇವ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸತಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೆಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟು ದೇ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟು ತ್ರೀ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟು so um, so ham nirnam shula sukhaya dukham mahad gatanam viramaya tasya pravartaye bhagavatam puranam yaha ah sakshat bhagwan rishibhya translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swamishla prabhupad let me now begin speaking on the bhagavad purana which was directly spoken to the great sages by the personality of god for the benefit of those who are entangled in extreme miseries for the sake of very little pleasure so vidur spoke asked maitreya muni so many questions and now maitreya muni is saying he's going to speak from the bhagavad purana mean shrimad bhagavatam and this was spoken by the supreme lord to the great sages directly by the supreme lord so there is no mistake in it any knowledge spoken by the supreme lord means it's beyond any mistake beyond any doubt and why did he speak for the benefit of those who are entangled in extreme miseries for the sake of very little pleasure so that's i don't know if you all have the experience that to gain a little bit of pleasure we undergo so much is not this in the material world the difference between material and spiritual world one of them is in the spiritual world just by being there we feel happy because that's the nature satchidananda just being in the spiritual world we feel happy we do not need to endeavor separately to become happy but here in the material world if we want to become happy we have to really work very hard for that happiness and the happiness which we received in exchange for the endeavor is very short lived it's not unlimited it's it's little and temporary the sage maitreya proposed to speak on shrimad bhagavatam because it was especially compiled and traditionally comes down in the disciplic succession for the solution of all the problems of human society only one who is fortunate can have the opportunity to hear shrimad bhagavatam in the association of pure devotees of the lord so we should be grateful that we are being given this opportunity to hear shrimad bhagavatam as was spoken by sukadev goswami you know 
under the spell of material energy, the living entities are entrapped in the bondage of many difficulties simply for the sake of little bit of material happiness. And, and why do we do that? Why we keep working? Because we think we are the body. You know, it's, it's so deep in us, even though we hear, oh yeah, you're not the body, you're the soul. Uh, we hear it, but we don't feel it. You know, our, our attachment to this body, our attachment to the material world is so much that just to keep it happy, we keep endeavoring so hard me and mine, you know, they engage in fruitive activities, not knowing the implications. Fruitive activities means we work to get the result. We always thinking I will work like this and I will enjoy, but we do not know that how this enjoyment is going to come or is it actually give me, going to give me enjoyment or will it cause me further suffering, whether it will keep me still in this material world and cause me to suffer more under the false impression that the body is the self, the living entities foolishly relate to so many false attachments. Now, because we think we are the body, we, we, we have forgotten that we are the soul. So we think, we keep thinking we are the body. And now because we keep thinking we are the body, we are attached to it. And we are also attached to everything related to the body. Me and mine, anything related to the body, we are very attached. But we do not realize, hey, this I'm not this body. I'm the eternal soul. I have to give up this body at one time or the other. I'll be forced to give it up. They think that they can engage with materialistic paraphernalia forever. This gross misconception of life is so strong that a person suffers continually, life after life, under the external energy of the Lord. So our attachment to this body, to this material nature is, is very deep. That's the reason we have been able to be here since millions of births. You know, it's going on since millions of births. If one come, comes in contact with the book Bhagavatam, as well as with the devotee Bhagavata, who knows what the Bhagavatam is, then such a fortunate man gets out of the material entanglement. Therefore, Sri Maitreya Muni, out of compassion for the suffering men in the world, proposes to speak on the Srimad Bhagavatam first and last. So that's what uh, Bhagavatam helps us do. Bhagavatam helps us cut our attachment to this material world and get connected to Krishna. And then so it said the book Bhagavatam and the devotee Bhagavatam, or the devotee Bhagavata. Devotee Bhagavata is who? Who? Uh, follows the instructions given in the Bhagavatam, who can teach us to live by the principles of Bhagavatam. And then when we take guidance of such a, uh, such a devotee, what happens? We can get out of this material world. It's very, very, very difficult to get out of the material world. Why is it difficult? Because our desire to be here is so strong. You know, that's the reason we say that Maya is so strong. Why? Because our desire to be here is so strong. Like uh, one devotee was saying to Shla Prabhupada, Shla Prabhupada, the Maya is so strong. So Prabhupada said, because you're uh, so weak, you know, that's the reason we find Maya so strong, because of our desire. So what we have to do is to try to change our desire. How can we change our desire? Continually hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and chanting the holy name. It helps us to change our desires. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. yes. But changing our desire is not that easy, right? It's not. So, but then as we continuously hear and chant in the association of devotees, that gives us the strength. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like we can see before we heard and chanted in, in association of devotees, we didn't have even one desire to mm. hear about Krishna. But gradually, gradually, at least that sometimes that desire comes, you know. So and so prayers also equally powerful. Oh yes, prayers are very powerful. Prayers are very powerful. That's our our conversation with Krishna. Okay. Yeah. So and uh, okay. 
desiring the mercy of the devotees to help us. Mm. Yeah. Desire to, like, I can't do it, Krishna. I can't do it by myself. I need help. I'm so attached to this material world. Please cut my attachment to this material world. Please pick me up from my and place me as a particle of dust at your lotus feet. You know? So, yeah, prayers are very, very powerful. So, reading on text three. Ashinam Urvayam Bhagavantam Adhyam Sankarshanam Devam Akuntha Sattvam Vivitta Svastatvam Ataparasya Kumara Mukhya Munayo Anvaprachan. Some time ago, being inquisitive to know, Sanat Kumar, the chief of the boy saints, accompanied by other great sages, inquired exactly like you about the truths regarding Vasudev, the Supreme, from Lord Sankarshan, who is seated at the bottom of the universe. Okay, so now Maitriya Muni is saying, you see, we see that they don't say, oh, according to me, th this is it, this is it. Whenever we see there's so many conversations happening in Srimad Bhagavatam, they always say, oh, you know, this question was put forward by this one, and then this like this it was answered that is parampara system we we don't make up anything we are not so we are not perfect to get perfect knowledge so what we hear we repeat so maitriya muni is saying oh i'm going to repeat to you what sanat kumar sanat kumar is one of the four kumaras and then he had asked to lord sankarshan lord sankarshan is holding all the universes on his many many hoods so here, Lord Sankarshan, uh, Sanat Kumar is asking him. This is in clarification of the statement that the Lord spoke directly on the Srimad Bhagavatam. When and unto whom the Bhagavatam was spoken is explained here with. Questions similar to those put forward by Vidur were asked by great sages like Sanat Kumar and Long Lord Sankarshan, the plenary expansion of the Supreme Lord Vasudev answered them. So perfect knowledge has to come from the Lord. Then it's perfect. And then the re devotees repeat what they have heard. You know, they repeat. So it is perfect knowledge. And so we should follow, we should with full faith, with firm faith, accept this knowledge, try to understand this knowledge. You know, because in our experience in the material world, we get so cheated. Our experiences, oh, if I put faith in this, I get cheated so many times. And it's not only in this life, it's very deeply embedded in our subconsciousness. It's a samskar coming from many millions of words. So, so we are doubtful, even when we are hearing from the correct source, you know, because of our past experiences of being cheated. But somehow or the other, we should muster that great faith that this is bona fide. So I should put my full faith in this. I should put my full faith. Okay. Reading on. Could text you four. explain about Lord Sankarshan? I'm sorry? Lord Sankarshan. Yes. Means, could you describe? Oh, Lord Sankarshan, like uh, Balaramji. Uh, so Krishna expands in Balaram, right? Balaram, Balaram right. is Krishna's first expansion. Then Balaram expands into Narayan. Then Narayan expands into the first Chaturvyuha. Chaturvyuha expansions are Vasudev, Sankarshan, Anirudh, and Pradyumna. So they are all Vishnu forms. And it's okay. just the different placement of how they are holding the conch, the gada, the chakra, and the lotus flower. Then these again expand into um, Sankarshan, Vasudev, Pradyumna, and Anirudh. They are all Vishnu forms, actually. Right, yeah, I think Neha had sent, correct? Yeah, last time the tree, did. how it is expanded. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, right, right. No, it, it, okay. So, so they are Vishnu forms, and Lord Sankarshan is actually a uh, Vishnu form of Balaramji. The, all the expansions actually come from Lord Balaram, you know? Unless, of course, it's Krishna himself expanding for the gopis. Then that's his own expansion. But all the other 
um, expansions from, for Vaikuntha, for, uh, for the material world. Everything, all expansions come from Lord Balaram. He's the Supreme Lord also. And so Sankarshan is one of his expansions. Okay. Okay. Swam bahu manayantam yadva sudeva bidam amananti pratyag dritaksham bujako shamishad unmilayantam vibudho dayaya. At that time, Lord Sankarshan was meditating upon his Supreme Lord whom the learned esteem as Lord Vasudev. But for the sake of the advancement of the great learned sages, he slightly opened his lotus-like eyes and began to speak. So Lord Sankarshan is meditating on the Supreme Lord Vasudev, on Krishna, Supreme Personality of God. Text five. Swardhoni udare swajat Swajata kalape upash prashantas charano padhanam padmam yad archanti ahiraja kanya supreme anana bali pir varartaha. The sages came from the highest planets down to the lower region through the water of the Ganges, and therefore the hair on their heads was wet. They touched the lotus feet of the Lord, which are worshipped with various paraphernalia by the daughters of the serpent king when they desire good husbands. Ganges water flows directly from the lotus feet of Vishnu and its course runs from the highest planet of the universe down to the lowest. So we think that Ganga is only in, on this earth. But no, Mother Ganga, she's flowing throughout the universe. She's purifying throughout everywhere in the universe. She's uh, flowing on all the planets. The sages came down from Satya Loka by taking advantage of the flowing water, a process of transportation made possible by the power of mystic yoga. If a river flows thousands and thousands of miles, a perfect yogi can at once transport himself from one place to another, simply by dipping in its water. So this is one of the mystic siddhis, one of the ashta siddhis that the mystic yogis aspire for, or that I'll enter into the water in one place and I can come out in another place. The Ganges, and, but this is also a material siddhi, it's nothing spiritual. The Ganges is the only celestial river which flows throughout the universe. And great sages travel all over the universe via this sacred river. The statement that the hair was wet indicates that it was directly moistened by the water originating from the lotus feet of Vishnu, the Ganges. Whoever touches the water of the Ganges to his head surely touches the lotus feet of the Lord directly and can become free from all effects of sinful life. So here is saying, why is Mother Ganga so important? Why is Mother Ganga so important? Because she's washing the lotus feet of Krishna. You know, that's why she is so important. And so she is, she's touched the lotus feet of Krishna. And so if we touch her, then our sins get purified because of Krishna's lotus feet. If after taking a bath in the Ganges or being washed of all sins, a man guards himself against committing further sinful acts, then certainly he is delivered. But if he again takes up sinful activities, his bath in the Ganges is as good as that of the elephant, who nicely takes his bath in a river, but later spoils the whole thing by covering himself with dust on the land. So what do the elephants do? They'll take a very nice bath in the river. Very nice. They'll clean themselves thoroughly. But what do they do? As soon as they come up, they dust themselves again with the dirt. They put themselves all dirt all over them. So many people, we say, okay, we are going to go for Ganga Snan. Uh, that's all my sins can be washed off. We go there, we dip in the Ganga. And we come back, but we didn't change our lifestyle. We didn't change committing sinful activities. 
So then that Ganga Snan was a waste. Only for that moment, our sinful activities were washed away. But again, we are continuing to create more and more sinful activities. So how we act, how we desire is very important. And what's a permanent solution to take up set, to, to, to get rid of our sinful acts, for our sinful desires? The only permanent way that we can give up the sinful desires is by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Because that takes away even the seeds of the desire. It burns the seeds to desire, to commit to sin. So it's very powerful to chant Hare Krishna mantra. Mohur granto vachasanuraga skalat pade nasya kirtani taj kyaha kirita sahasra mani praveka pradyodito dama fana sahasram. The four Kumaras headed by Sanat Kumar, who all knew the transcendental pastimes of the Lord glorified the Lord in rhythmic accents with selected words full of affection and love. At that time, Lord Sankarshan, with his thousands of raised hoods, began to radiate an effulgence from the glowing stones on his head. So Lord Sankarshan, it seems, has been speaking the glories of the Lord since time immemorial. Since time immemorial, he's been speaking the glories of the Lord. But till today, he is still continuing to speak the glories. He's not yet come to the end of the glories of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is unlimited. So his glories are also unlimited. The Lord is sometimes addressed as Uttama Shloka, which means one who is worshipped with selected words by devotees. A profusion of such selected words comes from a devotee who is fully absorbed in affection and love for the devotional service of the Lord. So Krishna is always addressed as Uttama Shloka. Uttama Shloka means, um, you know, the devotees praise the Lord with the best of the verses, the best of the words. And so, so this, the, the glorification of the devotee uh, I'm sorry, the glorification of the Lord by the devotee, they are uttama shloka. Uttam means best, you know, the best of the words. There are many instances in which even a small boy who was a great devotee of the Lord could offer excellent prayers in the choicest words for glorification of the pastimes of the Lord. In other words, without the development of fine affection and love, one cannot offer prayers to the Lord very suitably. So the pure devotees, that's the reason we are always encouraged to hear about the prayers of the pure devotees, uh, the bhajan and the kirtan, which are sung by the pure devotees and not by just um, ordinary uh, people who the words might sound the same, but the mood, the mood is very different. That is important. You know, because when a pure devotee is singing the bhajans or the kirtan, like Bhaktivano Thakur, Narottam Das Thakur, if we hear the bhajans, then, then we can imbibe that mood, try to follow that mood, what, what a pure devotee has. And so it's very purifying for us. Text seven. Roktam kilaitad bhagavatamena nivritti dharma bhiratayatena sanat kumaraya satchaha prishtaha sankhya yana yanga drita vritaya. Lord Sankarshan thus spoke the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam to the great sage Sanat Kumar, who had already taken the vow of renunciation. Sanat Kumar also, in his turn, when inquired by Sankhya Yanamuni, explained Srimad Bhagavatam as he had heard it from Sankarshan. This is the way of the parampara system. Although Sanat Kumar, the well-known great saintly Kumar, 
was in the perfect stage of life. He still heard the message of Srimad Bhagavatam from Lord Sankarshan. Similarly, when he was questioned by Sankhyayana Rishi, he spoke to him the same message he had heard from Lord Sankarshan. In other words, unless one hears from the proper authority, one cannot become a preacher. In devotional service, therefore, two items out of the nine, namely hearing and chanting, are most important. Without hearing nicely, one cannot preach the message of Vedic knowledge. So we, we need to hear, hear attentively, or hear submissively, hear from the pure devotee. And then we can also chant. Once we have, we, as we keep hearing, we keep hearing, then we will keep glorifying also. Auto, it will happen automatically. We hear, we hear, we hear. And then one day we will be able to speak also. You know, we can't speak till the time we've not heard enough. So we need to hear. So, so Lord Sankarshan in the Vaikuntha world, he has a Vishnu form, but here he is also doing the service of holding the universes, all the universes on his on his hoods. And they, it's said that it's not that he's holding the universes like how they sometimes draw Atlas that he's being crushed by the weight of the universe. No, he's busy singing, chanting the glories. His hoods are busy chanting the glories. And all these tiny universes are like mustard seeds on his gigantic hoods, you know, they're very like, we don't take any, it's not any effort for us to hold a handful of mustard seeds. We can hold so many in our hand. So similarly, that's how Lord Sankarshan is holding all these uh, universes on his many hoods. So, so Lord Sankarshan is uh, Sheshnak. Sheshnak. Sema. Ananta Shesh. Ananta Shesh. Yeah. Ananta Shesh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And in the Vaikuntha world, he has a Vishnu form, mm. uh, a four-handed form, I mean to say, four-handed form. In the Vaikuntha, but in the material world, he it was in the form, form of... Okay. Yeah. Okay, Ananda Shish. Okay. Sankhya Yanaha. Ananta Shish, yeah. Sankhya Yanaha Para uh, Para hmm, Para Mahamsaya Mukyo Vivikshamano Bhagavad Vibhutihi Jagada so asmad Guruve and Vitaya Parasara Parasharayatha Brahaspatescha. The great sage Sankhyayana was the chief amongst the transcendentalists when he was describing the glories of the Lord in terms of Srimad Bhagavatam. It so happened that my spiritual master, Parasara and Brihaspati, both heard him. Also, now Maitriya Muni is saying, How did he hear Srimad Bhagavatam? So he's saying, When uh, Sanat Kumar heard it from Lord Sankarshan. Then Sanat Kumar repeated it to Sankhyayana. And when Sankhyayana was repeating this glories of the Lord, then Maitriya Muni's spiritual master Parasara Muni was there and Brihaspati was there also. So this is the way we receive transcendental knowledge. We hear in the parampara. This is giving the importance and importance of hearing in parampara and how these pure devotees who are repeating the transcendental knowledge, how they have heard it in the parampara from their spiritual master. So any questions or comments? Anything to add? If no, then we can stop here for today. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai shla Prabhupada ki jai Gaurapremnande Hari Hari Bo Hari Krishna. Thank you.